straight out at 10 miles an hour. And Langdon division, uh, delivers a first pitch strike at 632 to get us underway. Very important that Langdon gets off to a solid start. She's having a great freshman season. She's actually third in the nation and leads the SEC in strikeouts per seven, over 10 per game. Boy, and that ball is hit pretty well. Got a charge in it back to the wall, and it's caught. Jenna Blanton getting the start tonight. And that win just kept carrying that ball, and Blanton pulls it in at the wall. Well, when you have a rise ball pitcher in the circle, this is going to happen from time to time. The rise ball did not rise, and Jenna Johnson is on time, but she's met with an even better catch from Blanton, who gets all the way to the wall using her glove, times it perfectly, a huge out, and a real tone setter on defense for Kentucky. Absolutely. And Langdon comes right back and misses upstairs to Kenley Cahalen. Ball is ripped to right, and that's a base hit. Cahalen, one of only two Alabama lefties in the lineup. First baseman number 10, Abby Dutcher. Oh, right now, two loud yes. at bats yes. from Alabama. They're trying to set their own tone. We talked about it at the beginning of the broadcast. Just three hits last night for Alabama. Their top four hitters went over on the evening. Just a different tone so far in this game for Alabama. Dukeshire with 26 knocked in, looking to bounce back from last night. Takes a first pitch strike. Emerus Addison is our home plate umpire. Tom Meyer down at third. Carlos Guzman is down at first. For those of you who have not been with us, the dimensions here at John Crop Stadium, 200 down each line, and 220 to straightaway center. Well, when you're, you have a pitcher like Langdon, he's really filling up the strike zone early, and the top of the order struggled last night for Alabama. I look for head coach Patrick Murphy to put some runners in motion, hit and run, take the decision out of the, out of the hitter's hands. Sometimes that's what it takes to get that part of the lineup back on track. Yeah. Balls a swinging strike. Murphy down in the third base coaching box tonight. Caleb Bro, who was such an outstanding player for the Tide, down in the first base box. Murph only lasted through the second inning last night. And when Caleb Beaver was, I mean, just drilled with a batted ball. Ball grounded to second. Could it be two? Flip back to first. And the Wildcats get out of the first with a 4 6 3 double play. Hamilton, Blanton, and Borzaleri. And Koffel goes after the first pitch. And it's grounded right to the shortstop. Kahalen for out number one. We saw the play by Kahalen. Here's the way Crimson Tide defense was set up. Broadfoot, Kahalen, Hevelin, Dukeshire in the infield. Giles behind the plate for Beaver. Johnson, White, and Clark left to right in the outfield, and Riley Smith takes a first pitch ball. Well, I love that Coach Lawson keeps tinkering with the lineup. Sometimes you get you get in the middle of SEC play, you'd like to have right. a set lineup, especially defensively and uh, also offensively, but Kentucky has just not been on track in SEC play. They got their first win last night, and a lot of it has to do with continuing to move people around in the lineup, really looking for players to bring that intensity every day. You see Reesner over at second base again, not a typical second baseman. She, she usually plays shortstop, but she's moved over to second, a good athlete. She's given them good time at second base, and some of that intensity that Coach Lawson is looking for, it really paid off for him last night. High chopper. Beaver 
not only fielded it cleanly, but then flipped to first for out number two. Two quick outs for Kayla Beaver. Just you know, only got it just a few innings of work, not even through two innings last night. So she's feeling fresh, ready to go. Rarely do you see her be a game two of a series starter. Usually she's the one and three game starter. So this is a kind of an added bonus here for Bama to have her start in game two. So she will in all probability go tonight and tomorrow. We'll have the final game of this series tomorrow afternoon at two right here. As Hutchins gets set to look at the 0-1 pitch. Well, Kayla Beaver is wasting no time. She is pounding the strike zone, working the ball the top half of the zone, coming inside. She's not afraid to throw the ball inside to right-handed batters. Really helps back them off the plate a little bit. Stays downstairs. Swinging. Both pitchers come up with a one, two, three first inning. And lead off the second here is Marley Giles. Who hit the first of back to back homers for the Tide in the sixth last night. Emma Broadfoot followed her. It was Giles' fifth of the season. And there's Patrick Murphy. You see 26 seasons at Alabama, but he was there as an assistant when they started the program, right, Carol? I, and has just really put Alabama on the map. This is a team that year in and year out contends not only for an SEC title, but to a, war, a Women's College World Series bid. He's won one national championship, many SEC championships. Uh, just not only really focused on his program, but also has served as the NFCA president, elected yep. by, by his peers. So just just has made a huge impact on this sport. Ball popped up behind us. He obviously knows the key is winning, but he's also really interested in doing things to promote the sport. Yeah, he just, uh, you know, you, you go to the Rhodes house and it's packed every game, and, and he just has continued to build that stadium. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough ticket to get, and that's, just so exciting. You're seeing that at a lot of places across the sure. country. We need bigger stadiums. You know, we're selling out regionals, super regionals, regular season games. You look at our crowd tonight. There is a huge not many Alabama, empty seats. Huge you know? in Alabama crowd here just to the first base side. There you see the Kentucky side and the third base side. But I mean, a bunch of Alabama folks here tonight. There they are. And the berms full. <laughs> Well, Langdon, this is her pitch. It's a low and a slow breaking rise ball that jumps right over the bat of Giles, one of the best in the country at getting strikeouts. You look at that number, third in Division One, gets close to 11 strikeouts per seven, and it's because of the spin that she has on the ball. Very tough to track when you have that type of spin. Kendall Clark going after the first pitch, and that ball down on the right field line. And that is a foul ball, but a great job by Peyton Plotz to try to run it down. A lot of hard hit balls by Alabama. And, you know, Plotz isn't an everyday right fielder out there. The freshman really known more for her offense than defense. But she's been out there recently quite a bit more. And she just came up with a great catch for Kentucky. Just full out dive. I like that from Langdon. Even though it wasn't a strike, really wasn't even a competitive pitch, it was something down in the zone, really trying to change the eye level of these Alabama hitters. Everything has that little bit of upspin on it, even a curveball, rise ball, of course, screw ball. So working down in the zone, even though it's not a strike, not a bad thing for, for Langdon. But 
what I'd like to see her use more is her off-speed pitch right. because Alabama has her timed up pretty well. We're being pretty disciplined in the zone. If she can mix her speeds a little bit more, I think you're going to stop seeing a few more of these loud hit balls that I call just loud outs or loud wow, base that, hits. It's a great description. And that one she got a piece of, did Clark. And I mean, Daniel Gibbons there in the control room with us. I bet we had a half dozen or so at bats last night that went into double digit pitches. Just kept fouling them off, staying on, staying on. Scoot over down into dirt again. Well, that's one thing Alabama's been known for throughout. Patrick Murphy's quarter of a century tenure there is they are going to battle at the plate, spend a lot of time in their practices hitting the ball. And uh, they are they are going to really work their plate discipline. Did she go? They say no. It's Carlos Guzman. Look like a big commit, but I agree with the decision to check. The ball is foul. Had several reviews last night. Just a little bit of everything. Again, Langdon set with a 3-2 pitch. I think she went that time. Yes, she did. Yeah, last time, not as much of a commitment from Clark, but this time you can see the barrel of the bat, even from this angle, clearly goes in front of the plate. Tried to pull the bat back as quickly as she could, but just a nice job from Langdon. This is what she does. Moves the ball to both sides of the plate. Lots of spin on the ball. Gets lots of strikeouts. And then Clark tried to sell it by running down the first baseline, but to no avail. And here is Emma Broadfoot. She was on the back end of those back-to-back -back homers in the sixth last night. You see it was only her second. But it was one of the longest home runs I've seen here at John Crop Stadium. Lift it up to the right side. Porzanel is there. And two, one, two, guess he see part of the schedule. But I mean, tell me anybody else in the country that's played against that in 17 games. Well, and, and I think, you know, the fans across the country are really enjoying, there's been, there's been more ranked matchups, non-conference opponents this year than I've ever seen ever. Not maybe that type of stretch for one team. Boy, there is a shot by Plotz to the gap and right. One hop off the wall. She turns, heads for second, slides in safely. And Peyton Plotz gets Kentucky's first hit, and it's a leadoff double here in the second. Plotz just continues to improve throughout her freshman season. A little bit of an inside out swing. This pitch is actually on the inner half of the plate, but she steps toward third to get her hips out of the way and is able to drive the ball to the opposite field. You know, this freshman, when she hits the ball, we've talked about it before throughout the season, it just sounds different. She's just got tremendous power in her swing. Her setup is just so good at the plate. I think that's just where it starts, and it is just, I know she's worked hard on it, but it just seems so natural. And, you know, Rachel Lawson has already taken a look at this game and the way both these pitchers are pitching. And she knows how critical this run could be. So there you see Delaney Sullivan, who's already at second base as a pinch runner. One on, nobody out. And Grace Lorsing stands in. I don't know if players think about this or not, but Lorsing was the Kentucky hitter who drilled that ball back at Kayla Beaver yesterday and caught her right in the chest. 
It was as scary a thing as I've seen. Thank goodness she's okay. We were talking with her down in the bullpen just briefly. She seemed to be in good spirits. Continued pitching last night for a little bit after that, but it was clearly not herself. And I think it was a good move to go ahead and get her out. And she's come back out and gotten ahead of Larson 0-2. That just missed. Well, and you mentioned Coach Lawson going early to the pinch runner at second base. Lorson's been one of their most consistent hitters. And Kayla Beaver, I mean, she's in the top 15 in the country at yes. ERA. I mean, just very stingy with hits, only gives up about four a game. And so you're right, it, you just never know when that moment is going to be the moment, the game-winning moment. Right. It could be here in the second inning. So Lorson also called out on wow. the check swing strikeout. So who did they check with? Because Guzman is out there on second base. Did they check with a second base umpire? No, oh, they checked with the third base umpire, and that, that is the right protocol. You check with the umpire on the line. They have the better view of, of the plate. That's Tom Meyer, and I'm not saying he's wrong, but I mean, you don't have much of a view when you've got a right-handed hitter and you're in the third base box. And that that is the protocol, it, and, and it goes, it diverts to the umpire on the line. You can see our the first base umpire is off the line, so that's why the call went down the third base line. And there's a strike one to Cassie Reasoner. Little cue ball down to first. That one fielded cleanly by Dukeshire. And Sullivan advances to third, but there is Two outs now as Carissa Hamilton steps in for the first time this series. She's been swinging a hot bat as of late. But Hallie Mitchell getting the start behind the plate last night. After the first pitch. Well, Kentucky's game plan is clearly to be aggressive against Kayla Beaver. Both Beaver teams going after first pitches. Yeah, and Beaver doesn't walk a lot of, of people, so they know she's going to fill the strike zone. And, you know, really the only excuse me swing was from Lorson. Very poor timing for Kentucky there. They, they need her to, to swing away, but I like the game plan and the approach. You know, if that ball's near the plate, these teams are taking their hacks, being aggressive. That's what you have to do when you're facing a pitcher who's got an ERA, right. you know, through almost 90 innings pitched and it's right at 1.04 that that doesn't give you many opportunities so when you have one as Kentucky does in this situation you want to make sure you get aggressive swings throughout your at bat Beaver ahead 0 and 2 and did she go yes she did that time Guzman was on the line two strikeouts in the inning they can't. Two of the top teams in the country going at it. Just having tremendous seasons. They're getting great pitching. LSU, much more of a veteran team. A lot yes, of fourth sir. and fifth yep. year seniors. Florida, kind of the new kids on the block. A lot of young players just really making some noise. And of course, Skylar Wallace, the returning player of the year. Balls on the outside part of the plate for a call strike to Callie Hevel. Seven, eight, nine. Langdon tries to work through the Bama order. One ball, two strikes. They count to heavily. And as we always talk about at John Crop Stadium at this time of day, sun and shade become a factor. And that ball is smoked. That is over the camera stand. And Kelly Hevelin got a pitch she liked, and she drove it. And it's her fifth homer of the year. Crimson Tide leads one to nothing here in the third. Well, we've seen this quite a bit from Alabama so far in the game. This is a pitch that's supposed to be up in the zone. It hangs right over the middle of the plate, and Hevelin does not miss. She knew it right off the bat. She is on time. 
and absolutely crushes this ball and gets Alabama on the board. Now, the good news for Kentucky, we saw it last night as well, all solo home runs. When right. they have been hitting home runs, Kentucky's done a good job of keeping runners on, off base before the big blast, so it becomes just a solo shot, but still a statement swing from Hevelin. Carol, we were talking before the game with Gibby back there in the control room, and again, it's Alabama getting the lift from the bottom of the lineup and not from the heart of their order. Yeah, the, the bottom of the lineup's really getting it done for Alabama. So far, the top of the lineup, although Cahalan did get a hit in this game, just not making a lot of noise. Here's Riley Valentine. He takes the first pitch down low. Had to be down low. Langdon gets the sign and sets to work 1-0. Well, in this game, Langdon's been working from ahead before that home run. Really has not missed any pitches. She's really forced Alabama to hit out of their comfort zone, hit those marginal pitches on the edge. She missed one pitch, and Alabama made her pay, and now she finds herself down 2-0. Now it's 3-0. 3-0. And, and that's, you know, Langdon's a young pitcher. Boy, and look at that. I, I, I mean, I know you coaches, you love stats and everything, but that's difficult to overcome right there. That's, uh, uh, that's a preponderance of evidence, that number. Here's the 3-0. And Langdon got the call on the outside part of the plate. I feel like this at bat is really a more of a mental and emotional at bat for Langdon. Can right. she bounce back from giving up? She knows she missed that pitch. Hevelin did not miss the pitch. No. Get, get a first run on the board. Can she bounce back? That one missed inside. And that's her first walk of the game, which follows up the first home run of the game. And now Rachel Lawson sees exactly what's going on, and she pops out of the Kentucky dugout. I saw at the start of this broadcast her average at 364 in SEC play. So Valentine over at first, three for three on the base pass. And White squares to bunt. And my goodness, Hamilton just lost that. Valentine broke late. The play looked pretty close down there. I don't know whether Rachel Lawson might choose to use one of her challenges or not. Oh, and this is something we've seen a lot from the young catchers at Kentucky. Just, it was a strike call on the batter, and yet Hamilton couldn't hold on to Just it. Just lost and it. Credit Valentine for recognizing that and taking the free base. You know, Hamilton's arm still made it a close play, but that, those are the mistakes when you give a team like Alabama the extra 60 right. feet. Nobody out in this situation. It just opens the door for a bigger inning for Alabama. And it was not a difficult pitch to handle. So here now the 0-2. And that one had to miss low. So Sidney Langdon needs to get dialed in on just how low Emerus Addison is willing to go. Here's the 1-2. High chopper, that's gonna be big trouble. Wow, that was a really good play by Lorsing to turn around and flip it, because she had no shot at first. And they say that Valentine got in underneath the tag. And let's see. On every slapper will tell you the ground is your friend. And if you can get a high hop like this, when the ball's in the air, all that means is the runners can be running. And Valentine has good speed, recognized that immediately. No chance over there at first base for White. And now Alabama has speed at the corners as we roll the lineup over. White is four for four in the stolen base department. She does not go on the first pitch. And Johnson takes a called strike. She flew out to center back in the first. Yeah, I anticipate White will be in motion, either this pitch, the next pitch. They're going to keep pushing the envelope, put a little more pressure on the Kentucky defense this inning. There she goes. Johnson was hitting, and that ball's going to drop over into foul territory in front of the Alabama bullpen. 
And Langdon ahead in the count, 0 and 2. Ball to right again. And started out on that ball. Wow, that's, I know you want to make that play, but in that one, you let go hitting foul ground. Well, it's early in the game here for Sullivan. Kentucky and Alabama. It's it's very early in the game, and this ball is close to, gosh, is it fair or foul? No, I mean, it's foul. She's real, But she has no idea, her balls, and then she realizes, yeah, it's going to be foul, but get the out. I like the out in that situation. It's early in the game. This is a big inning so far from Alabama. You need outs to turn the lineup over. I like making that catch. Kentucky has shown they can hit the ball as well. So there's one out, and that's right back up the middle. Langdon did not look the runner back. That ball was certainly hit hard enough where she would have an opportunity to look that runner back. But again, as you said, they give Alabama an extra base as White goes to third. Yeah, just young pitcher in the circle, had plenty of time there to really give Kristen White a good look, keep her at second base. But again, trying to get that second out, you can tell this inning, Langdon a little more uncomfortable in the circle. And credit Alabama, they've taken the extra base when it's Say been it. given to them. And Dukeshire sure hits the first pitch and lifts it to right. Second baseman Reisner has it. And the inning is over, but not before the Playing Division I softball, so to have that many from the same league just shows you the strength of this conference. And that's a first pitch strike to the center fielder, Jenna Blanton, to lead things off here in the home half of the third. And fans hoping that Kentucky can answer the two spot put up by the Tide. First time all weekend, Kayla Beaver has found herself pitching with a lead. The ball's fouled off. And it's a 2 0 Kentucky. Uh, they trailed 2 0 here in the third. Could have been more had it not been for that catch by Jenna Blanton off the bat of Jenna Johnson, the Alabama leadoff hitter. Now she will try to lift her team up with the bat. That right there is the definition of just fighting a pitch off. I like this Kentucky team's been feisty this weekend in their at bats and talking to coach Lawson before the weekend that was the number one thing she was looking for was intensity from the first inning through the last inning just wanted to really reward players who were bringing that intensity battling fighting staying feisty got her on that swing fourth strikeout of the night for Beaver and this is what makes Kayla Beaver so tough to hit. She can stretch the zone vertically. So we've seen a few strikeouts with the rise ball moving up in the zone, and she also has this break on her drop ball moving down in the zone. Not too many pitchers in the country really have that elite vertical spin where the ball can move both up and down. I think they're the toughest to hit. She has. Certainly got that competitive nature that you can see as well. Every strikeout, she celebrates with a little fist pump. And that means she's been doing a lot of punching this year. Oh yeah, and then, by the way, she throws the ball at a very high velo. She can get it up to 70 miles an hour on, on every pitch. So not only is she spinning the ball up through the zone, down through the zone, which really changes the hitter's eyes and mm -hmm. a little tougher to hit when you move the plane vertically versus horizontally just to really barrel it up and, and you know, all of a sudden you start guessing she's going to go up she's going to go down and, and she's just gritty in the circle and, and that's what makes her elite going after Borzaleri and she got her 
Two batters here in the home half of the third and two strikeouts for Beaver. Oh, we saw her get the first strikeout of the inning with the drop ball. This time she goes upstairs. And that ball is just the spin on the ball combined with the velocity. She also can tuck it. It's got a little bit of an inside movement. And Borzaleri just waving at the ball. And really a defensive swing. Wildcats back at the top of the order. And Aaron Koffel, who grounded out to short. And Beaver just absolutely continuing to pound that strike zone. Got well, that one on the inside. And if you're in Alabama, this is what you like to see. When you, when you take the lead, you want to keep the momentum when you head back out on defense and, and not give Kentucky, in this case, you know, a chance. Just really keep the bases clean. Pound the strike zone, and that's what Kayla Beaver has been doing all season long, really leading this Alabama team in the circle. Eighth in the country in team ERA. Beaver comes in in the top 15 in ERA, and just stingy with hits given up. I think that's the most impressive thing I've seen is, you know, throughout the entire course of the season, she, she gives up about four hits every time she gets in the circle, so you've got to make them count if you're an opponent. String them together. Right. We'll be talking to Alabama head coach Patrick Murphy here in the top of the fourth. As Koffel thought about chasing that Beaver offering and then held up. And she ripped that. That ball's going to get to the gap. Couple of hops to the wall and left, and Koffel cruises into second even though the ball gets away. And the umpire down at second, that would be Tom Meyer, called obstruction, didn't he? I thought I saw the left hand come out, and that's why Koffel went down to third. Now here comes Murph. Trying to decide, I think, I think he's trying to decide whether or not to challenge. Well, and, that, and right there you see the obstruction. Koffel sees the ball go away, and she decides to head toward third base, and then you can see that without the ball, Kahalen did not have the ball, and therefore it was in her way, yeah, and that is obstruction, and so she is given third base. And so with two outs, here's Riley Smith trying to get the run in Koffel home. This hitter, whoever's hitting behind Aaron Koffel becomes so important in the Kentucky lineup. We've seen a variety of people all season long. Sometimes it's been Allie Hutchins, sometimes Grace Warsung. Riley Smith is having an exceptional year, probably the best year of her career. And Coach Lawson loves her mentality. Hitting behind Koffel also becomes another leadoff batter if in the, in, in the case where there's nobody out in this situation. They're really looking for a two-out RBI. Smith. Let that one go upstairs, and it's 3 1. Allie Hutchins waiting on deck. Now that one off her foot. 
Smith is really a, an active hitter in the box. You know, you see some hitters, they're just real quiet, not a lot of movement. She is just an explosive player on defense, an explosive player on offense, and that's how she approaches everything she does. Just really battling here. Go a long way for Kentucky. They can get another run or get their first run on the board and answer back. And Smith swings through the 3 2. Hey, sorry. Uh, Murph, you're fine. Hey, uh, everybody was so, so worried uh, about Kayla last night, but boy, is she pitching well tonight. Yeah, big difference. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those days where maybe she was a little bit off and other uh, circumstances, but much better today. I'm glad you're getting to see the real Kayla Beaver. Well, Coach, the, the bottom of your batting order has had so much success so far in this series. You know, what are you seeing from them, and how important is that for that production down at the bottom of the order? Oh, you know it is, as a former coach. It's huge because it turns the lineup over. But now we need, uh, like, one, two, three, four, five to come through. Because you're right, uh, six through nine have done well. Now we need the top of the order to do it, too. Murph, thanks a bunch. Best hey, of luck. Thanks for being here, you guys. Appreciate it. Okay, take care, buddy. That's Patrick Murphy as we get set to go here in the top of inning number four. And you know he's right. I mean, uh, he understands where he is and, you know, expects that production from the lineup. And they just haven't done it yet, but the bottom of the order, as you said, has picked him up. So here we go. Again, it's like the middle of the lineup, I guess. Four, five, six, Giles Clark and Broadfoot. Marley Giles struck out in her only other time up. This is an important inning for Sidney Langdon. Last inning gave up the two runs. Had a walk mixed in there. Just coming back and setting a better tone for her team in the circle. She only averages two and a half innings per appearance. So we just kind of wonder how long she's going to be able to go here tonight. Wow. She hit another one. I mean, we're just sitting here talking about what she did last night. And now she's hit a homer in each of the first two games of this series. And that one, the only question about whether or not it would go out is whether or not it was high enough to clear the fence. That was a rope. We didn't have a stopwatch on this one, but this is right down the heart of the plate. Another miss from Sydney Langdon after seeing so much spin, so much movement early in the game. Langdon's been laying too many over the middle of the plate, and credit to the Alabama hitters. They have not missed. They have been attacking that pitch. We don't have a stopwatch on that one, but I'm saying that was out of the park in less than two Why seconds. Why did Zero to 60 and whatever they say. Ball smoked. Now we've got activity in the Kentucky bullpen. Alexia Lakatena beginning to work as Kendall Clark misses for strike one. Alabama now with three runs on four hits in one error. Kentucky no runs, two hits. And to this point, they have played error free. And this is where I don't think some people get it. You know, you talk about maturity and everything, but you can just tell, you know, Langdon's body language is a little different. Until you've been through this, you got to figure out how to get through it. You just, you cannot rush experience. You just, you cannot. And that's why you see a lot of teams, I mean, you know, you look at, look at the top of the SEC, you look at Tennessee, you look at Georgia, you look at LSU. Those are very veteran teams. Yes, they they know what it takes. They've been to postseason. They've made deep runs. Even you look at a lot of the, when you, when you look at the, the March Madness, a lot of the teams that mm -hmm. advance have those veteran teams who just can't put a price on it. You've got to work through it. You've got to make quick adjustments as a freshman. And I think, I, I'm sorry, I think it was one of our first calls where Rachel said, there's not a real balance in the league this year. There's a lot of older teams and a lot of really young teams. For sure, and you've seen that across the country. This is kind of the last year of that COVID year. Oh, what a play by Coffer. That was a hard hit ball by Clark. That was not an easy play to make, but 
Coughlin sure made it look routine. She just missed consistency. You know what you're going to get every time she puts her uniform on and steps, her, steps on the field. She's going to give you her best. She's one of the best players to ever wear a Kentucky uniform. Here's Broadfoot, who homered right behind Giles last night when they were back to back in the lineup. Clark splitting them tonight. And Broadfoot put a charge in that one, and it's right back to the fence. By golly, they almost homered the same inning again. Well, and if I'm Rachel Loss, he commands. Both sides of the plate horizontally. And her first pitch to Callie Hevelin is a swinging strike. Maybe, just maybe, the reason that Rachel Lawson made that move there was that Hevelin had already homered off of Langdon back in the third. I'm sure that was a big piece of the puzzle. And just the way Langdon has been throwing in the last last two innings you know it just she just was not getting that break on the ball that movement as you mentioned the body language just getting a little down on herself and in, in, in Alabama you know you hear about teams knocking pitchers out wow that ball's hit did. a long way too and it's off the base of the wall Hevelin wasn't gonna stop at second coming for third and the throw hit her and had it not hit her I think it would have been a bang bang play at third but Hevelin delivers with a two-out triple off the center field wall. But Alabama is on time tonight, but Kentucky, look where these pitches are. Too much of the strike zone, and that allows Alabama to get extension. And Blanton thinks she's going to come up with another one. I'm not sure where the, the right field, left fielders were for Kentucky. They should have been. This is their home field. They know that ball's going to ricochet off the wall. They were a little late getting over there, and Blanton had to retreat. That allows the triple. Riley Valentine walked into third, and she takes ball one here in the fourth. Evelyn down at third. <laughs> Valentine with 11 knocked in on the year, but only a 220 average. Oh, and this is where Vickers is, is really going to have to work. When you look at the course of the season, Alabama's batting average against left-handed pitchers versus right-handed pitchers, it's over 100 points higher. They're hitting 375 as a team against left-handed batters. So obviously they have a lot of comfortability hitting against the lefties. They're able to keep their hands in. Any balls breaking inside to the right-handed batters. Vickers has battled back to even the count at 2-2 with two outs. Got her on the outside part of the plate. And the inning is over, but not before Bama gets another run on two hits. They leave one on base. Cast three runs. She did not pitch badly. She just gave up two big flies. Yeah, no, she actually, uh, considering this is her first big start in front of yep. a big crowd, I think, and, you know, she's going against a super senior. So, you know, it's kind of an uneven matchup in that way. But I was really proud of her going out there, taking the mound. And I'm sure she's not happy about the big hits, but I know she'll be fine in the future. Coach, couple doubles from your team so far against Kayla Beaver. What what would you like to see from your offense? Put a little more balls in play. Yeah, you know, we've gotten the big hits, but we haven't done anything, you know, quality at bats behind them to kind of produce. So we got to make sure that we're working together as a team, making sure that we're doing the right, uh, you know, picking the right pitches, uh, attacking the ball, all that kind of stuff so we can eventually score those runs. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck rest of the way. All right, thank you. All right. It's Rachel Lawson. She'll see that tape and see what her players were doing behind her. Somebody would be in trouble at some point in time. But the trouble that the Cats are dealing with now is that young lady, Kayla Beaver, as she has gone three innings, given up just two hits, struck out six, and has not walked a batter. Grace Lorsing leads things off here in the home half of the fourth. 
you know, a pitcher like Kayla Beaver, you mentioned it, Just she just gives your team so much confidence. You know, every time she sets foot in the circle, she is experienced. She gives your team a chance. She, she forces the offense to stay on their heels. She gives your team a chance. And that's Emery Donaldson who is pitch hitting. My apology. And she lines out to the second baseman, Hevelin, for out number one. One of the hardest hit balls we've seen tonight comes from Donaldson off the bench. This is a rising line drive. And Hevelin time, times her jump perfectly, but that's what you want to see. Kentucky is such a good pinch hitting team. They are very good at coming off the bench, making some good things happen. And here's Peyton Plotz re-entering, chops the first pitch down to third, and Broadfoot takes care of it for out number two. And a substitution into the outfield for Alabama, Larissa Pruitt, the sophomore, takes over in right field for Kendall Clark. And now here is Lorson. Lorsing struck out in her only time up. That one misses downstairs. Neither pitcher is getting that low strike from Emerus Addison. But that's consistent, right? Which is what you want. Well, for sure. And, you know, in theory, the strike zone should be the same every game. But there, there is that human element in there. And, you know, that's something that Caleb Beaver is so good at. And that comes with that experience we talked right. about before that maybe Sidney Langdon, just as Coach Lawson said, big crowd, beautiful night. It's a packed house, big opponent. And, uh, you know, this has been there, done that for Caleb Beaver. She's able to make those adjustments if she's not um, in the zone on that particular night. She can adjust her stride a little bit, adjust her release point, change her vision, do something quickly to make that adjustment. And after falling behind 2-0, and now we see her come right back with 2-2 two and two count. Larson couldn't do anything but foul that one off. I like our whole persona, too. You know, in terms of Beaver, kind of marches around out there. You, know, you can't see what's going on behind those eyes. Mask is a little intimidating. This is gritty. And then the bow it's softens it, of course. The big bow softens it. It's just gritty. I mean, she wants the ball, as you mentioned, had a short night last yep. night variety of reasons and and comes right back and says you know put me in coach and you know talking to coach Murphy before the game he, he was happy to have him in the line. and Larson threw that bat down she knew she had been rung up before oh. it singled and made it around the third back in the third they left her stranded at the end of that inning Kristen White, what's so impressive about her, everybody in the in the ballpark knows what she's going to do. She doesn't have an extra base hit on the season. A lot of stolen bases. The whole infield comes in, the outfield pinches a little. She's just trying to find a gap, use her short game to get on base, bunt, use her barrel control, try to shoot the ball through the infield. We saw her last time beat the ball into the ground and had a nice high hop. So she's just really using her barrel control, reading the defense, her main goal is just to get on base. Tried to drive that one into the dirt. And missed it. Tried to punch one to right. Potts is there for out number one. And so, unusual, as I look out toward the Alabama bullpen, Beaver's down there getting in some throws. I mean, how many pitches has she thrown? She has only thrown 
50 pitches. Here she is trying to stay loose between innings. And here's the leadoff hitter, Jenna Johnson. Oh, and sometimes when you're the starting pitcher, you just don't feel good about one of your pitches. You're like, man, I, I just can't quite find a release point. I can't quite get the spin. And, right. and they head, head down and, you know, you look down and you think, well, Kayla Beaver's having a great night. Well, to her, to her credit, you know, she wants to have a fantastic night. So there sure. must be something a little bit off with one of her pitches she just doesn't like and uh, goes down to the bullpen and works on it. And again, that's the sign of a veteran, uh, someone who's just always working to get better. Great description. A little bit different than taking a few practice swings off the side of the tee box after you hit a bad one, right? Same, yep, no question. Pickers behind in the count, two and one to Johnson. It was Johnson that hit that foul fly ball. Out to right field that Nesby dove and caught in foul territory. But it allowed the runner to tag and score from third. And Johnson was on her way down to first base. Emerus Addison said, hold on. And then the next pitch hits her. That's one thing Alabama is not afraid to do. They like to get right on the plate. This pitch, no chance anyway. It comes in, gets the protective guard. It's clearly in the batter's box. It's a curveball that got away from, from Vickers, but that's something Alabama's not afraid to do. Typically, a, a team that gets right on the plate, you can see quite a few hit by pitch from them, but they're also very good at hitting from that position. Kenley Cahalen fouls off the first pitch. Alabama only with 11 stolen bases in this starting lineup tonight. Johnson, the leadoff hitter, has only attempted one and stole that base. We talked about Halen and, and really the whole Alabama team not afraid to get on the plate. They trust their zone and look at Kahalen. She's not only on the plate, but back in the box. Really feels comfortable in that position. Now, if you're a base dealer on ahead of her, you love that. She likes to be in the back of the box. Right. It gives the catcher a little longer throw, but right. she really likes to see the pitches get deep. And, and, and some hitters aren't comfortable in that position because it does give the ball more time to break. But Kahalen works there every day, really likes that extra time. Boy, that one didn't miss by much. If I'm a pitcher, or if I'm Ella Emmert, I'm wanting that call. Yeah, that fouled off. She tried to check her swing and still caught a piece of the bat. Vickers again with a 2 2. That ball's going to be trouble. Smith couldn't get to it. It goes to the wall. She's at second. Johnson comes around to score. That's an RBI double for Kenley Kahalen. And the Crimson Tide extend their lead to 4 to nothing. What in that bat by Kahalen battles, fouls a few off. This pitch is a curveball running away from her. She lets it get deep and is on time and finds the deepest part of the park down the left field line. And the speed of Johnson easily scores from first base. And in stands Abby Dukeshire. She's just not gotten untracked this weekend. 
Hit into a 6-4-3 double play. He's hit the ball well. Just hadn't found a hole. Dukesher's in the three spot in the Alabama lineup for a reason. Leads the team in hits on the season. Leads the team in home runs on the season. And sometimes you go through that stretch where you have the Adams and hit it right at people. You just got to keep focusing on the process. And, and the worst thing you can do as a hitter, and it's easier said than done, is bring those at bats you didn't like back with you to the new at bat. It's right. Kind of like hitting with a weighted vest on, you know, you got all this baggage and it's just something that you have to continue to work on. Every at bat is a new opportunity. It's definitely easier said than done, but the best hitters can do that. They can have a great short term memory and just take each at bat as a new opportunity. Once again, the 2-2. Two -two. Only slightly better tonight. Had runners in scoring position, but as you've mentioned, Carroll have not been consistently coming through this weekend. That's back to Vickers. That's the way you look a runner back to a base. That was a pretty play right there. When you have a pitcher who becomes truly that fourth infielder, of course, the catcher as well, but that fourth infielder who can really play defense, hold the runner at second base, not allow Kahalen to get to third base. A nice play by Vickers. And with two outs, here's Marley Giles, who last time up hit her second solo homer of the weekend. Hit number five last night, number six tonight. That's really been the biggest difference in the game has been the long ball from Alabama. We, we just saw they have left a few runners out there again tonight. They certainly have more base runners continue to put that pressure on Kentucky defense, but it's been the it's been the long ball. Larson comes up with it across the diamond. A run, a hit, no errors. They leave. Aaron Koffel got a double last inning. Reesner fouls that one off. I know she hadn't gotten to play a lot, but I haven't seen her. I mean, she has been right on balls at the plate all week long. Well, it's really been a shortstop. You know, that's where she's been practicing, and that's really her best position. But Kentucky just felt like they needed a little more offensive firepower in the lineup, wanted some more intensity in the lineup, and said, look, you know, Reesner's a good athlete. She can right. middle infielder, and so she's really just practiced at second base a short time and has, you know, really stepped up to the challenge. I don't know whether Giles, the catcher, didn't have the battery charged on her communication device, but she got a new one from the dugout. Now we're ready to go again. Well, when you're facing a pitcher like Kayla Beaver tonight, who is just in a rhythm, in a groove, you got to do something to disrupt that. And, you know, now with two strikes, you're not going to see it. But I'd like to see Kentucky go to the short game a little bit. Dukeshire's playing behind first base. Just do anything you can to get a base runner. You it's mentioned really they have the two doubles, but that's really been, that, no, that's really that's been it. it. Beaver set to work 0-2. There's a little squib to first. Dukeshire handles it herself. With one out, 
so Hamilton has been catching. And she's still catching, but technically she's been moved to the designated player spot. Ball grounded to short. Halen handles it, and quickly there, two down. But defense really playing well behind Kayla Beaver as well. We talked about her seven strikeouts. But all, every other ball that's been put in play, just a lot of confidence in the defense playing behind Kayla Beaver. And it's, it's been tough for Kentucky tonight. Boy, Beaver is just pouring it into the strike zone. One out away from closing out the fifth inning, and she's only thrown 56 pitches. And she hit Ella Emmert right in the middle of the back. First time Emmert has faced her. Well, this is a pitch that gets away from Kayla Beaver. Meant to be a rise ball, up and in. Just let go of it a little bit too early. And I think that's the only one that's gotten away from Beaver all night. Oh, for sure. Just, I mean, she hasn't thrown been very complete. many balls. She hasn't even been to three three ball counts very often. 57 pitches, 41 of them have been strikes. Borzaleri before the Cats turn over the order. Well, and you think in this situation, geez, let's, if you're Kentucky, let's get a runner down in scoring position. And Alabama's only given up eight stolen bases all season. Wow. Eight. And a big reason is their pitching staff. They, they're, they have one of the best ERAs, top ten in the country. So, you know, you, it's it's tough to risk getting a runner thrown out with a, with a stolen base when the pitchers have really filled up the strike zone and right. controlled the hitters. So not only has Giles done a nice job of throwing, would be base dealers out, so does Valentine, their other catcher, but it really has to do with the the low ERA in the circle and the inability for opponents to get hit. And that's ball four, and that's the first walk of the night. Issued by Beaver. Again, she struck out seven. She has given up the two doubles, one to Plotts, one to Koffel. She hit Emmert with a pitch. And so Borzaleri will be lifted for a pinch runner in the form of Hallie Mitchell. And Kentucky finds itself trailing. Alabama four to nothing here in the fifth. Here's a young lady that can make it a one run game in a New York minute. We got the last thing Kayla Beaver wanted to do. We've talked about how she was really in control of this game, kind of cruising through, gets to the eight, nine batters in the Kentucky lineup, hits one, walks one. The last hitter in the Kentucky lineup you want to face at any time, let alone with two runners right. on base, is Aaron Koffel. Got that one. I, I thought that Marley Giles did a great job for her on framing that first pitch strike. And you see those homers in SEC history. Here now the 0-2. Boy, I think if Giles holds on to that ball, she gets that strike call. And that's it's something we've seen teams do all season long to Aaron Koffel, really work that inside yep. part of the plate. That's why she also has so many hit, hit by pitch. She's second in the country in getting hit by pitch. Teams have really been pounding that inside part of the plate. She has backed off a little bit throughout the season, really to, to try and put herself in a better position to hit that pitch. But she's the career record holder in home runs at Kentucky, yep. career RBI leader now. And this is the player you want up if you are Kentucky. Just so consistent in her approach and her at bats and her performance. Battle back to even account at 2 2. And then Beaver misses away. I, I think on that other pitch we were talking about, I think Emerson Addison was ready to ring her up. 
Had Giles held on to the ball and given him a look. And so now 3 2, two outs. Runners should start. And Koffel hits it on the button. And that is gone. of the season for Koffel. And Beaver got herself behind an account. Erin Koffel shows you why she is one of the best hitters in the country. She's anticipating, hunting that inside part of the plate that we talked about earlier. She does not miss. It is to center field, gets full extension. Kentucky is right back in this ball game. Koffel again with her 11th, RBI is 25, 26, and 27. And then Riley Smith comes through with a first pitch. Two out single up the middle. Emery Donaldson entered the game in place of Allie Hutchins. No re-entry here as Donald will be given a chance to swing away. Smith, nine for nine on the base pass. All the momentum with Kentucky right now. I, I look for Smith to be in motion throughout, you know, at some point in time here during this at bat. Ball missed inside. And that's, you know, been the difference in this game as well. Kentucky's hit one home run, Alabama's hit multiple, but they've been solo shots right. in this entire series. And you can see what a difference it makes having the base runners on in front of those home run hitters like Aaron Koffel changes the game completely. That ball grounded is short. Kahalan had to get some help from Duke Schurz at first. So the inning is open. And the tide will bring up five, six, seven in the order. Check swing to the leadoff hitter, Kendall Clark, who re entered for Pruitt. Vickers has done a really nice job. In an inning in the third, giving up two hits, just one run on that solo homer. One strikeout, most importantly, no walks. That off speed pitch missed downstairs. Yeah. The corner that time. An important inning for the Alabama offense, who's really been in control of this game. They've scored in multiple innings, three of the five innings so far. To just keep your same approach that you have. They've been very disciplined. When they have, they have been on time tonight. They really haven't been fooled. There hasn't been a lot of miss hits. Really hasn't been a lot of swings and misses. No. Nope. Overall, you just want to keep that same approach. Even though the score changed a little bit last inning. That ball a one hopper to second, and that was a tough hop. And you can tell Reister. She hadn't been out at second a lot, but she got that one. And Aaron Koffel going over to give her a little, little high five. You know, just that ball had a lot of English on it. Yes, you get that at second base a lot with a right-handed batter, you know, and just good footwork, good hand, hand-eye coordination. She committed an error on a ball just like that last night. And with one down, here's Emma Broadfoot. Now with the game back, and it's just a one-run ball game, I see Stephanie Schoonover up and in the Kentucky bullpen. Scoot over. Looks fresh as a daisy after throwing 181 pitches last night. Wow. That 
call has been rung up all night, but instead, Broadfoot ahead in the count, 3-0. Broadfoot fouled out the first in foul territory, and fouled out to right. Both sides, both times to the right side. What a pitch by Vickers coming back. This is what Vickers has brought to the Kentucky circle. She's just resilient, she's feisty, she's competitive. She's not gonna back down to anyone and see that in this particular at bat. Broadfoot able to fight it off, just off the end of the bat. And if you're a defense playing behind a pitcher like Vickers, you just love it because they're going to battle, they're going to fight. And, uh, you know, you want to do everything you can as a defense to get the out for your pitcher. And she's on as she works a 3-2 walk. Patrick Murphy wants to talk with Callie Heavily. I think he's going to put in a pinch runner. It's going to be six Kinley Pate. He's going to go in and run for Broadfoot. Played in 23 games, and she is seven for seven on the base pass. So that gives you an idea of what Patrick Murphy is thinking here in the sixth. Trying to get one more runner in scoring position. And Valentine and Wider do to follow heavily. Oh, that hit her off the helmet. I uh, they say on the wrist. I thought it got the front of her helmet. And now Rachel Lawson is saying, did she move? And she wants a review. Actually got that elbow pad. Oh, we see this a lot from hitters. You know, the question is, is she in the box? It does look like she does batter's box or not on being hit. So that, that could be as well what they're reviewing. But you cannot review whether she left early in second, right? Oh, at first base, you could. At first, yes. you could? Oh, sure. And so the call is uphill. But no, it wasn't. Because now there's one out. Check with Chris Schultz and find out what happened. So Pate at second, Hevelin at first. Appears as though the Kentucky appeal failed. And they ruled that that was not intentional. They have to get hit by the ball. And now Valentine gets a one two, and that's lifted to short center and over the head of Reisner. Boy, I'm telling you, Hevelin was all the way down at second. But I think Pate did the right thing, having to hold up at second and didn't get started, but if she had been going from the jump, she would have scored. Oh, it's just good base running, though. You want to get off as far as you can and read the play, and you take a look there at the runner at first base. 
was Hevelin just reading the ball. Now, if that was caught, she would have had to retreat very quickly, but it's just good base running by Alabama. Reisner almost makes an outstanding play, stays on her feet, runs through the ball, times her jump, was just out of her reach. Alabama in this particular inning, once again, it's the bottom of the order, finding sure. their way on base. A walk, a hit batter, now a base hit. Now here comes a pinch hitter, and now here comes Rachel Lawson. And as we start to clean all this up. Opportunities to score here. Lauren Johnson would be the younger sister of the leadoff hitter, Jenna Johnson, I believe. There are three Johnsons on this team. And Pate on third, Hevelin on second, Valentine at first. And that ball's hit into right field for a base hit. Pate scores. Here comes Hevelin to the plate. Valentine chugs into third. And Patrick Murphy goes to his bench. And Johnson delivers a two RBI single. Comes off the bench. This pitch is down in the zone. It's a curve ball. And she gets her barrel on plane to the bottom part of the zone and flares it into right field. That is a big pinch hit for Alabama as they get some distance on the scoreboard once again. Now here's Big Sister who follows with runners still at the corners and just one out. Jenna Johnson was hit by the pitch last time up. Oh, she hit that one a bunch. Is it enough? Yes, it is. Boy, she turned on that pitch and crushed it. Three-run homer. And the margin is now six. Well, this is the third home run of the evening. Talk about hunting a pitch on the inner part of the plate. She gets out in front of this pitch, keeps her hands inside, elevates the barrel, and hits it deep into the night. This, what a comeback. And Lauren is the freshman wearing 18. So Lauren got the double to drive in two. And then Jenna, Goes yard for three RBIs. And all of a sudden, a one-run game is now a six-run Alabama lead. And Lakatena on for Kentucky. And that ball is smoked right back up the middle. Kenley Kahalen hit that one on a rope, her third hit of the night. She's three for four. Oh boy, after last night, Alabama only had three hits in the entire game. They're already up to double digit hits, really locked in tonight. And it's been against three different pitchers that have come out for Kentucky. We can close the book now on Vickers. She pitches an inning and two thirds, gives up five hits, six runs. They were all earned. One walk, one strikeout in 58 pitches. She threw more pitches in an inning and two thirds than Langdon threw in three and two thirds. That ball skied up over by the Alabama dugout. And that's a nice play by Donaldson for the second out of the inning. Sorry, that is Borzilleri. I've just had an awful time tonight between Borzilleri and Donaldson. Double numbers. Inexcusable. Find me, Gibby. Well, I will say, give yourself a little grace there, Buzz. There's nobody like Coach Lawson to make the most use of her lineup offensively and defensively. She keeps us on our toes. And I am certain this is Marley Giles, who has gone yard for the second straight night. Solo homer back in the fourth. Pretty off-speed pitch from Lacatena. <laughs> 
Hoffel has it on a couple of hops and throws over and the inning is over. But not before the tide get five runs on four hits. They you want to give to Kayla Beaver. You know you go back through this game so far for Kentucky and you know outside of the the last several batters she faced in the in the previous inning you know she really has been in control and that's going to be the challenge for her now that her team came right back that's the sign of a great team what you want to see is okay someone scored on you and drew the game close the offense came through for Alabama and now it's up to Kayla Beaver and the defense to go back to fundamentals Lots getting set to look at a 3-0 pitch. And that's not be what Beaver wanted to do after getting a six spot from her teammates. Well, that's exactly how she pitched herself into trouble last inning. You know, the eight batter, nine batter, two free passes. Aaron Koffel with the home run. Seen her lose a little bit of her velocity and yep. certainly a lot of her control here later in the game. And that's a called strike to Grace Lorson. But she does have eight complete games on the season. And also quite a few saves. So this is, you know, she has been the ace of the staff. Kind of the warrior out there in the circle. The inside part of the plate there with a pretty pitch. You know what in the first few innings we'd see Kayla Beaver, you know, probably average four pitches per batter. Right. You know, she'd get ahead. Maybe foul ball, and, and you know she hasn't had a strikeout now since the fourth inning. That was just one strikeout, so just you know she just wow. has gotten a little bit out of her rhythm. This is the second time here recently that Giles has had a problem with her communicator. This time she goes out and trades with the first baseman Dukeshire. So the battery's not dead if she's trading it with a teammate. Foul off the right side. On the other thing with Kentucky making adjustments against Kayla Beaver, this you know this is their third at bat against her, and, and some had an at bat last night as right. well. Very short outing for Kayla Beaver. A lot of good adjustments being made here by Kentucky. She went way inside and missed with a 2-2 pitch. After walking plots on four straight, there's Lorsing with a single through the right side. Plots doesn't slow down, nobody out, and now the Cats have runners on the corners. Lorsing has been a key hitter in the Kentucky lineup this season. Just showing you her power to all fields. We've seen that from her really all season long. Pitch runner on first base. That's the junior, Margaret Tobias. And now Taylor Ebbs 
who we saw back for the first time last night, Caroline. Uh, I think you were with me when she jammed her shoulder. It was that weekend of the tournament. She's still wearing that brace on her shoulder. But she came in, she got a big pinch hit last night. And here she is with Plotz on third and Tobias on second and nobody out. Taylor Epps is the best pinch hitter. This is a good pinch hitting team. They're hitting over 300 as a team as a pinch hitting role. But Taylor Epps, four for six on the season. This is a role she has really shined. Boy, that is a little cue ball. And let's see, is there interference or obstruction? They're pointing to second base. And I'm not sure what Carlos Guzman is calling. So I think what they're gonna do is they're gonna call Tobias out for interference. Is that right, Carol? We'll take a look here. The ball's a little miss hit. And yes, that's exactly what it's going to be. Interference on Tobias. So at the point the interference is made, that becomes a dead ball. And Plotz goes back to third. Yeah, so not only is that a base running mistake by Tobias, you got plenty of time there to hold up even go behind the defender, jump over the ball, but the last thing get you want to do is get get in the way because that takes a run off the board now for Kentucky. That is clear interference. The ball is not past the defender. So that's just a big mistake by the Kentucky offense. And so to, Tobias was safe at first, but it looks like Cassie Reisner has re-entered to run for Tobias. You know, Tobias was the runner that interfered, so she was out, and so Reasoner now is at first base. Which would have been Ebbs, Reasoner's now re -entered. Yes. And Carissa Hamilton takes a called strike. Struck out, grounded out to short. Emmert on deck for the Wildcats in the eight hole. And that ball's hit well to center. Johnson has it, plots, tags, comes in and scores. It's the fourth Wildcat run, but the Alabama lead is still at five. And most importantly for the Crimson Tide, they have two outs in the inning. Well, Hamilton does her job, gets the ball to the outfield, looks for that elevated pitch from Beaver and is able to do her job and score another run. Rachel Lawson is gonna go with another pinch hitter. Looks like it's gonna be the senior, Erica Thulin. So Reasoner at first. Thulin at the plate. And two outs here in the home half of the sixth. <laughs> that ball shot through the right side. Reasoner did a nice job of holding up. And a diving attempt. by Dukeshire, but she couldn't get it. Just can't say enough about Kentucky and their ability all season long to come through in a pinch hitting role. Yeah. Thulin comes in and how about this slick base running there from Reasoner, just such a good athlete, good field awareness, able to get herself out of the way, keep the inning going, extend the inning. Okay, so Giles now goes out to talk to her pitcher. A lot of moving parts in this one right now. So we have got... We've got 55, Aaliyah Johnson, 21, Jay Torrance, 
who've been thrown most of the night down in the Alabama bullpen as that ball is fouled back. What a play by Giles. You could have called the whole play. It's like passing a bill in the Kentucky State House to get all the verbiage right. So here's what I got, I think, right now. Blanton is back in center. Donaldson is in left. Plotts is in right. Kendall Clark takes ball one. But who knows where everybody's batting? Well, and Kentucky has such good athletes. They really move around the field. We saw, you know, Emmert before play out in the outfield, and she caught an inning, and, you know, just, just really good athletes. So you can have the versatility. And if you're, I'll tell you, if you're on the Kentucky roster, you, you better have your arm ready. You better have your bat ready. You better be ready to, to go at any time because you could be playing any position. You could be hitting in any spot in the batting order. Just really makes good use of that roster depth. One state downstairs. So here we go. So Donaldson is in left field. Morrison goes to third base for Tobias, who had come into pinch run. Hamilton back in there at catcher. And Jenna Blanton comes back in in center field. Meantime, back at the ranch. Lacatena, the 2 2 to Clark. Staffs, one of the best strikeout pitching staffs in the country. Just their whole staff has quite a few strikeouts. Right. And yet Alabama tonight, by my count here, just has three. And just watching their at bats, you know, I'm sure they were really frustrated last night. They had only earned three hits. And they saw a lot of pitches from Stephanie Schoonover, 181 to be exact. And yet just three hits out of all of those pitches. And Boy, we have seen a different Alabama team tonight. Up and down the lineup, finding ways on base. There's been, some really good at bats. They haven't been fooled on anything tonight. And it's been against three different pitchers for Kentucky. And Lacatena out there now, and Vickers, and the starter, and Langdon. Here's those strikeouts you're talking about. Yeah, that's that's nationally. So they're they're third, knocking on the door, of leading. You know, kind of trading places with some of those schools. But we haven't seen that from Alabama tonight. There's a shot through the right side. Clark gets her first base hit of the night to lead things off for Alabama in the top of the seventh. Well, it's been so impressive. We just haven't seen a lot of missed hits. And you know, you, you get a look at that that graphic right there. They're in the top 20 in the country in the kind of walk to strikeout ratio. They just they put the ball in play, they battle, take take uh, make the pitcher really work. And boy, tonight we we do, they have just been on point, on time. Just wow. 11 hits scattered everywhere. There you see the communication and Lacatano was signaling to her catcher Hamilton that she wanted to put the target up. Don't see that kind of exchange very often. Oh, we've talked about it a lot throughout the season with Kentucky. If you're a softball fan, you know the name Kayla Kowalik here at Kentucky. And 
know, was the longtime starting catcher and leadoff batter for Kentucky for many, many years. And, you know, it's been a bit of a challenge behind the dish to find that everyday starting catcher for Kentucky. They've, there you get a good look at her coaching now this season. But, you know, they've had Hamilton, they've had Mitchell, we saw a little earlier, Emmert has had some time behind the plate as well. And, you know, having coached a long time, I think the toughest positions on defense coming in as a freshman is catcher, there's no doubt, or pitcher for sure, and, and catcher, and, and then out at second base, just because of all the decisions you have to make. Got her on the inside part of the plate. She didn't like the call. But Amaris Addison brings her up. Malaka Tena really paints the corner, that low inside pitch, and credit to Hamilton yes. there. Little, little assist to Hamilton, and that is a tough pitch. You're a right-handed catcher. You know that low inside pitch to your glove hand is one of the toughest to frame. She keeps her elbow up and out of the way and is able to pull that ball up. Allie Haviland having herself a night. She homered in the third, tripled in the fourth, hit by a pitch in the sixth. Clark over at first. Koffel's got it with a backhand. What a pretty play that was. That's a couple of those tonight that are anything but routine. Boy, is she playing well in the field. Well, Koffel has really developed into an elite shortstop. Really came in as an athlete playing defense, and now she can make plays like this. Drop steps to give herself time. That ball had some pace on it. Drop steps, keeps her glove low in a backhand position, knows her only play is to second base, fires it over there. Just an elite play at shortstop. Checked out at first base. Carlos Guzman says that Riley Valentine did not go. Koffel will lead things off for the Cats at the bottom of the seventh. She, Smith, and Donaldson. Lacatena really just moving in and out of the zone, working kind of horizontally across the plate. She typically likes to work down in the zone a little more. We've seen her bring it up, but she's had some good location, really hitting her spots on the corners. Like that one on the outside. Valentine couldn't get to it. Now she finds herself in the hole, one and two. More down spin on that ball. And that's, the, that's the spin Lacatena is really looking for, looking to feed her defense. And here's the 2 2. Just missed. Valentine was not expecting it there. But I agree with Emerus Addison. I don't think she got the plate on that one. Kentucky bullpen. Oh, yeah. 
Santana gets the sign, and once again, the 3 2 pitch. That one wasn't close. So Hevelin goes down to second. Valentine at first. Staying in to hit is Lauren Johnson. Had that two RBI base hit last time up. I like the tenor falling behind quite a bit in this inning, not really using an off speed pitch. And so far with Alabama, they, they haven't had to worry about the timing element. They're just really hunting inside, outside. A lot of foul balls. Johnson now with seven RBIs. She's played in 25 games, now 26, and has started in 17 of those. Tana got that one upstairs to even the count at 2 2. Check that. She's ahead of the count, 1 and 2. Said a couple of different times, big crowd. None of them have left here tonight. And that ball is fouled behind us. Right off the facing of the stadium. So impressed with this Alabama offense tonight. Their ability to foul off pitches, take, make the pitcher throw a lot of pitches every at-bat because they can foul pitches off. And just one of the best, really one of the best in the country in terms of fewest strikeouts. They really don't strike out a great deal. And they're showing you why tonight. They're good barrel control, good plate discipline. Ball's upstairs and evens the count at two and two. dives and can't get it in foul ground. That ball just, I don't think it was hit that hard, but it had some funny kind of spin on it. And any ball hit kind of toward the line like that's going to carry, continue toward yes. the line. But, you know, Morsling's tall athlete over there. Uh -huh. She she gave every inch of it and uh, really stretched out. Good effort. Just out of her reach. Like it was in slow motion yeah. for a minute. Missed downstairs. This the ninth pitch of the at bat. And Lacatana set to work three and two. Try the inside part of the plate. Lauren Johnson continues to sit on the inside part of the plate. Hevelin at second, Valentine at first. Two outs in the Bama seventh. Got her. And the inning comes to an end. Leah Johnson comes in and throws ball one to Aaron Coffin. Yeah, I like this change from Alabama. Even though Kayla Beaver has got her team through six innings, they turn it over to Johnson. You're going to see a lot of off-speed pitches. She throws it often. 
and, and she tunnels everything very, very well. She makes every pitch look the same. She really doesn't throw as hard as Beaver in the low 60s and really can spot on the corners, but it's that change up, that off-speed pitch. She's gonna throw it a lot, throw it on any count. It really disrupts the timing. And I like the, the timing of this switch for Alabama. Koffel's last at bat against Beaver was the home run, right. the three run home run. So giving her a different look. That missed inside. So Beaver's six innings pitch, six hits, four runs. They were all earned. She walked two, struck out seven through 88 pitches in a nice bounce back night. And so Judson comes in and walks the leadoff hitter, Koffel. Riley Smith is now the DP. And she takes strike one. Oh, and this is where if you're Kentucky, there, you know, there's no signals, there's no signs. There's, there's nothing fancy happening. It's just a lot of grit and trying to pass the bat. Find a way on base and pass the bat. And that's that off-speed pitch right there from Johnson. And you see Riley Smith went to her slap way out in front of the ball. Just such a deceptive motion from Johnson. Yeah, that one kind of. She does not bring it very quick. This gun said 34. I don't know how it registers on the top end, but that might be close on the bottom end. Look at all the spin on that ball. Oh my gosh! And she threw it away. Koffel goes into third, Smith into second. So that's going to be an error on the pitcher, Johnson. And that is 110%, not what Patrick Murphy wanted to see. Yeah, a rough start here for Johnson. This ball's hit off the end of the bat. A little English on it. If you play billiards out there, you know what that looks like. And Johnson has time to get the out at first base, but Feels rushed because of the speed of Smith and, you know, a little discombobulated. The ball had a lot of spin on it. Looked like she just no dropped need down to and rush. went sidearm, didn't get squared up. No need to rush there, and instead she does, and now Kentucky finds themselves with two runners in scoring position. And let's see. So this will be Donaldson. Has hit the three spots since coming on for Allie Hutchins. Once again, Coffin at third. Smith at second. Nobody out. Wildcats trail by five here in the home half of the seventh. Yeah, the Alabama defense playing back the infield. They're willing to concede that run. I mean, kind of the race is on here in this game. Can Alabama get three outs before Kentucky can get five runs? So there's playing back, giving themselves some range. Nice play there at third by Broadfoot. She was able to look Koffel back, throw across the diamond and get the first out. Oh, I think Alabama defense couldn't have had it hit to a better spot with a runner. Less than two outs, runners in scoring position at third base. You get a ground ball to the third baseman. That's exactly what Johnson wanted. Keeps the runners at third base. There's Broadfoot. She's had herself a nice weekend here in Lexington. And Peyton Plotz takes a first pitch called strike. Ball's lifted to right field. Second baseman, Hevelin, has it. And the tide is just one out away. It all comes down to the third baseman, Grace Larson. Struck out a couple of times and singled back in the sixth.
Boy, you are so right. I mean, the miles per hour difference between her and Beaver. Oh, it makes it such a tough pitch to hit. Is it looks the same, and every pitcher out there is trying to have their off-speed pitch look the same as their faster pitch in terms of a release point. But, but Johnson really makes it happen. It, you know, yeah, it's not her velocity her, of her faster pitches that make her so impactful, like Beaver. Yes. And she can heat it up to 70. It's it's the fact that her off-speed pitch. The way she tunnels it, the way she releases it, looks a lot like her faster pitches and really disrupts the timing. And that got her, and that's it. Nice bounce back win for Alabama. Nine runs, 11 hits, two errors. They left six on base for Kentucky, four runs.